Last week we kicked off our 2023 teaching series called It's Time. We started off by looking at the Bible in Luke where Jesus said, following me isn't going to be a walk in the park. We're not going to stay at the best hotels. We don't exactly know what tomorrow will bring, but what we do know, it's time for you to step it up. It's time for you to make your move. We have a green light, and it's time to get serious about having the best version of yourself that you've ever had. I use the analogy of the green light. When the light is green, that doesn't mean you wait. It means go. Green means go. We discovered last week how many of you have a lot of patience and how many of you don't have a lot of patience at green lights. So I want to tell you this morning, it's time to get a move on. Honk, honk. If you don't know what that means, go back and watch last week. If you have been complacent in 2022, leave that behind you. If you have been overly busy, change your priorities. I told you a few weeks ago on Prayer Sunday that God has kind of been dealing with me a little bit on simplifying my life. It seems that we are so busy we don't even have time to rest. And the fact that when we do rest, if we do rest, we know we're going to be that much further behind. So you just said, you know what, I can't rest. I just got to stay on top of it. And really what happens is whenever we simplify our lives, it actually allows us to focus on what matters most and we become more productive. So don't get so busy that you've lost your true level of effectiveness of productivity to do what God's called you to do. We gave way too much time in 2022 to things that should have never entertained our thoughts. We can't allow that to creep into 2023. You say amen. amen. We talked about three different things that we need to move on from. And I encourage you to go back and watch that message last week. Go to our website and you can go and see what those three things are. And we concluded the message in saying that in 2023, we've got to, number one, grow closer to Jesus. Everyone agree with that? Yeah, you can't not hide that one. You can't not get away from that one. Number two, we got to grow closer to people. You've got to be intentional about relationships when the girls get together. You got to make it a priority. You got to make church attendance a priority. Guys, whenever we do our one event every six years, we're going to be there. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's my fault. Um, number three, you got to grow closer to your purpose. We did a series called Spiritual Gifts last month. If you did not get to check that out, go back, watch it. You have a purpose in your being here. And if you don't know what that purpose is, watch that series. It'll help you find out what your purpose is. And number four, we are to grow closer to God's passion, which what we used it for in the, ser in the service was that we are to walk in peace and holiness. If we are going to see the Lord, the Bible says you can't see him without holiness. So we've got to make holiness a part of our lives, but we also have to walk in peace. The light is green. It's time for you to go. Focus on what matters most. In your outline, let's get to new content. You guys ready for today? <laughs> Me too. Henry Ford said it most simple. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get... I want, to have, I want you more than anything to have the best version of yourself in 2023. When I was planning and praying for today's message, um, actually the series, I knew the first week. As soon as I was thinking about it, the Lord just went, Phew. I knew. But when it came to today, uh, going to be kind of transparent, I really wasn't sure what to go on. I had written down on a... On, on this mind map thing that I do and written down ideas and thoughts, but none of them just seemed to be right in my spirit. None of them seemed to settle right with me, and, and I, I really wasn't sure. And then this past week, um, Abigail was online on Amazon, and she ordered some skates. And she was telling me about them, and I was like, well, hey, wouldn't that be fun if I got some skates too and we could come skate together? And she was like, yeah, that would be great fun. And then Matthew heard that. And Matthew came from out of his bedroom running down the hallway. I want skates too. And so he wanted skates. And then the fourth one came. Adrienne came out of the bedroom. I want skates if you guys are getting skates. And so in a few moments, we all had ordered skates. And... Um, and once I clicked that pay now button on Amazon, Abigail said, this is going to bring me oh so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> then it hit me. In 2023, if we're going to have the best version of ourselves, we're going to have to walk in joy. Everybody say joy. 
Come on, say joy. joy. For Abigail, her joy came by getting a new possession. But that is a temporary feeling. Because it was not two hours later that she was asking me to go to Target to go buy her another toy. She had already forgotten about the skates we had just ordered. There is a difference between the emotion of joy and possessing joy. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I'm going to have to walk in joy. When I choose joy, listen to me, it changes my outlook on everything. Joy is a possession. When something is a possession, you can't lose it. It is yours. My grandmother had an expression that it was great, but it was terrible at the same time. The expression was, it's no big deal. It didn't matter what it was, it's no big deal. If you're sick, it's no big deal. If you failed your test, you're going to get a spanking, and that's no big deal. It didn't matter what it was. The greatest aspect of this phrase was it taught us that no matter where you are going or what you are going through, it is temporary. It is no big deal. You cannot allow the temporary to steal your joy. I was in an office this past week of a business executive, and, and on the whiteboard it said, uh, don't let a bad 30 minutes ruin your 24-hour day. You have to choose to walk in joy. And I believe that this is a great way to start our 2023 year is to bring out the best version of yourself, and that is to bring out a person that walks in joy. Joy, we need to lay some groundwork about. Joy is a point of view. Joy is a way of looking at things. Let's look in your outline, and Adrienne is going to read Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, and hath sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here is Jesus going through the most horrific event a man could go through, and he says there is joy set before him. Do you think for one minute Jesus had joy in the pain of nails going through his feet? Do you think for one minute Jesus had joy in the pain of the shame and guilt and being spit on and being uh, beaten and, and all of the things that went on in that season? Absolutely not. So there must be a joy that is different than a temporary feeling. Did you hear that? We think joy is a feeling when reality joy is something beyond that. Abigail had a temporary emotion of joy getting skates, but the, emo the emotion was gone soon after. There is a difference between the emotion of joy and the possession of joy. Let me explain that a little bit better. Read Nehemiah in your outline. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. All right. You guys got to follow me close on this. All right. You ready? You ready? Okay. In the middle of your worst days, there is godly joy you can have. Back a few months ago, Matthew, our five-year-old, uh, had to go to the dentist. And I don't know about you, but me and the dentist mm -mm. No. ain't going to happen. I don't like them. I don't like the drill sound. I don't like the smell. I don't like anything about the dentist. And for Matthew... We discovered that he carried the same passion for the dentist that I had, and um, he, he, he wasn't having it. And that dentist came to Adrienne and said that we're going to have to put him under because, uh, you know when you go through Walmart and that kid that's acting unruly and you're like, I'm so glad that's not my kid? That was Matthew. <laughs> he was climbing up the walls. He was crying. He was screaming. He wasn't, wasn't going to have it. But he had to get the cavities filled and all that stuff, and so they put him under. And uh, this quiet kid that began to become irate, is that a good word for that? He was crazy. Um, within just a few moments of this kid crying, screaming, kicking, he was laying there peacefully. What happened? What am I trying to say here? I want you to listen to this. In the middle of a terrible moment, something can be introduced into your life that will change your perspective. 
I don't think you got that. In the middle of a terrible moment, something can be introduced to your life that will change what you're going through. Matthew was screaming and crying, and they, in a moment, gave him something, and something was introduced to him that stopped. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that one's landing. Um, you can be going through something, and if you keep your attention and your focus upon God, the thing that you're going through, something can be introduced to you to help you get through that thing. You are going through something, and let me just put it blank forward so if you're not getting this, and the power of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of joy can be introduced to you, and no matter what you're going through, you can change your outlook because of something that's been introduced into your circumstance. Whenever you're going through something terrible, I want to submit to you today that something in your life will be introduced that will change your perspective. It doesn't mean that you overcome the grief of that moment. It means in the middle of the moment, Moment, there is still godly joy available to you. Jesus was not smiling when he was getting beaten. He was not up there thinking, man, this is great. Man, I love, oh, hit me there. Oh, come on, do it a little. No, no, no. He had pain that was undescribable. He was suffering, but it says in that verse, he still had joy because joy was not an emotion. It was something he possessed. I want to unpack that, but I need to give you an understanding, some more groundwork before I can unpack that at the end. All right. I want to give you three theological views of joy. Once you understand these, you can understand how Jesus went to the cross, endured it all, and still was joyful. In your outline, let's write down number one. It's on the screens behind me. Know that God has a plan for my life. When you don't know why you were born, you allow every event that comes along in your life to define you. Let me say that another way. Um, when you are facing something difficult, when you don't have the realization that you're a child of God and God has a greater plan in place, you allow that trial to dictate your standard of emotions. When you are operating in your purpose in life, there will be an internal possession of joy in your life. In the temporary pain, there is still joy available. Most of you know that I own a business, and there are days you can ask Keaton and Travis, and those of you who have been out there and helped me, that clients can suck the joy right out of your life. <laughs> God. There are people that whenever they just get by you, you just hear the slurping of life. <laughs> like, <laughs> But if I give someone else the power over my life, I lose the ability to retain joy in my situation. Jesus never gave the people beating him the power over his life. For me to walk in joy... I have to know that my purpose in life is being accomplished. A temporary set of emotions does not overcome the standard of joy that is set before me. People are going to suck you dry. We have a business. We have a church. I'm just going to be real transparent. We're family here. People are going to leave this church for the dumbest reasons you've ever heard of. If Even if I told you, you'd be like, for real? People are going to say things in your life. People are going to do things in your life. And you just sit back and wonder, like, how are they that stupid? <laughs> but it doesn't affect me. I still retain the joy in the situation because there's more greater purpose more greater, because there's greater purpose in what is taking place. Because no matter what I go through, I trust that God has a plan for my life. And if I understand the theological view that God has a plan for my life, the temporary set of emotion that you're facing can be overturned when something is interjected into it. The word says in Psalms that when you're going through something, 
Psalm 16, the hand of God can still be there and be guiding you. And it says in verse 11, read that, Adrienne, in your outline. You will show me the pathway of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. David is writing, when you are in the pathway or the plan of God for your life, you can possess joy. There is fullness of joy. If you are not in the plan of God for your life, where do you think your joy is? This is a good thought I want you to look at in your outline. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. Yeah. Know that God has a plan for my life. Mm -hmm. That's the first theological view of joy you need to understand. Number two, write this down. Know God will work it out. We know that God has a plan, but when the plan gets interrupted, you have to choose to believe that no matter what I am facing, God will work it out. God has a bigger plan in place. Even when it looks like it's not working out, even when it looks like they've all turned against you, even when it looks like there's pain beyond pain, you have to come to a place where you say, God, I'm going to trust that you are going to work this out because it is who you are. Peter said in the Bible, chapter 1, verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Peter is saying you can walk in joy because you know that you know that you know God is with you. He will work it out. His plan will not go unaccomplished. Yeah. You say, well, I don't understand why I have to go through this. I'm going to be real transparent with you. There's a lot of things I don't understand we have to go through. But I've got to understand that God will work it out. I'm not going to try to put my flavor on what God's trying to do. I'm going to trust that God's going to work it out. There are things that happen in our lives that I don't understand. But no matter what. I have to choose to walk in joy. A greater purpose is taking place. And even though I don't know all the details of why, what, when, where, and all that, I know that God will work it out. Joy in your outline is the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. <laughs> the third theological view of joy, let's write down number three. No, I must choose to find joy. You think joy is supposed to come find you. You got to go find it. You have to pursue it. You look at the outside and it starts raining and some of you are like, man, it's raining. You just choose to not find joy. When it rains, you look outside and say, oh boy, the flowers are getting watered. The grass is getting greener. I'm thankful for the rain. I'm going to go sing in the rain. You've got to choose to find it. It just snowed, and you're like, man, my windshield's all covered in ice, and it's cold and bitter, and, I don't, and then you slip and fall on your way out to the car, and you, you lose your joy, and um, you got to choose to walk in joy. When Adrienne and I were in college, it snowed one day. And Adrienne, being a Southern California girl, didn't understand that snow is slippery. And uh, she was going to classroom one day, or it's called, the, what's it called, the GC? GC. Go to the GC, where like, all the classes were. I wasn't there very often, so I don't remember what it's called. Um, uh, where, all you, where you took your classes and everything, and she slipped and fell outside. And my friend, who happened to be close to her, started laughing. And he found a lot of joy in what she went through, but she didn't. And she's like, Ping, why aren't you helping me? And uh, then after he chose not to help her up, she started laughing because there's this guy is who she knows as a friend is not helping her up. So she found joy. So it really doesn't matter what you're going through. You can find joy. <laughs> I'm going to choose to walk in joy in all things. Read that next verse, Philippians 4. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Why did he have to write that down twice? Because he knew you already forgot about it from the first time. He's like, repeat, you've got to rejoice. You've got to walk in joy. It is a choice that you have to make. Can I have that? Yeah. I don't know, um, have any of you seen Winnie the Pooh? Yeah. He's, he's not my, my favorite cartoon. Um, but there's something about the, the characters of the 100 Acre Wood Forest. Remember the 100 Acre Wood Forest? Yeah, you've got... Uh, what, what are the characters? Al? Uh, uh, Al is, what, what's the, Al? he's the, um, like he's a know-it-all. <laughs> Who wants to be around a know-it-all? Other than my wife. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just a rat out on me. There, there's Piglet. Piglet's this, this psychotic little pig that worries about everything. Just, <laughs> just always worried. Yeah. Rabbit's the taskmaster. That's me. I am the rabbit. And are you guys identifying with any of these or just me? Am I the only one? That, okay. Um, Winnie the Pooh's kind of like the dreamer. Winnie the Pooh's the dreamer. Eeyore. How many of you guys are depressed melancholies? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's Tigger. Who did that? Who did that? He did that on point. He did that on point. There's Tigger. And... and the thing about Tigger is Tigger's so in love with Tigger is he, he wrote his own song, and it says, no, you guys want to sing along with me? The wonderful thing about Tigger is Tigger's a wonderful thing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys know? Okay. okay, some of you started singing. Some of you were kind of embarrassed, so we're going to try this again. <laughs> the wonderful thing about Tigger is Tigger's a wonderful thing. Like, was it what? He just keeps it going. He, he knows it. He knows it. But... But the, the great thing about Tigger is they might be going to go pick apples, and, and, apples said, and, and Tigger's never picked apples, but Tigger said, oh, the, the, the craziest thing is that's what Tiggers do best. Yeah. I've never picked an apple, but that's what Tiggers do best. They're, they're, they're going to go and um, go ice skating on, on one of them, and he says it just happens to be that that's a Tigger's favorite thing. <laughs> but, but Tigger didn't have a clue how to ice skate. He didn't have a clue how to pick apples, but he walked in joy. He had confidence in who he was. He had fun. Everybody wanted Tigger around. He wanted to be around everybody. He had the spring. I asked my kids when I was writing this, who's your favorite one? And they both were like, Tigger, because Tigger's the life of the party. Because being a Tigger is a wonderful thing, and a wonderful thing is being a Tigger. How come when we look at our life and we go through everything, we look at it as doom and I've got these spreadsheets to do, I've got to put it for work. What if we looked at those spreadsheets and said, the wonderful thing about being Mike is Mike's a wonderful thing and that just happens to be the very best thing that Mike can be. Who cares if it's putting spreadsheets together? It's an attitude, it's a choice that we choose to walk in. There are things in our life that will suck the joy out of you. But you can choose to walk in joy. There are things in my business that I don't like doing. But how many times has my wife ever heard me say, I don't like my business? Not often. Because I choose to walk in joy. Because the assignment that God has given me for this season, I will choose to walk in joy. The wonderful thing about Tigger is Tigger's a wonderful thing. The wonderful thing about being Taylor is Taylor's a wonderful thing. And that just happens to be what Taylor does best. The wonderful thing about being Pat is Pat's a wonderful thing. Because that's what Pat does best. You put your name in there. This is funny. Ha <laughs> ha. But the truth of it is, it's your attitude of what you choose to walk in or not. I choose to be like Tigger. <laughs> when you look for the positive, you will find the positive. When you look for the negative, you will find the negative. The thing is, whenever someone, myself, or we come and say, would you go pray for this person? You know what you say? The wonderful thing about being a Tigger is Tigger's a wonderful thing, and that's the very best thing that Tigger can do because I will pray for them. 
I don't know how to pray for him. I don't know what to say. My words going to get all come bobbled up, but I don't know how to finish the prayer. And, and how do you, what, am I supposed to ask them questions? I don't know. But it just happens to be that that's what I'm the very best at. I've changed my decision. And I walk in joy. So therefore, when God comes to you and says, I need you to do something, you don't sit there and say, God, I don't know why you're asking me to do this. I can't do this. I don't know why I'm going through this. No, God, I'm going through this because, hey, you guess what? It just happens to be that's what I do best. Why is God allowing me to go through this? I don't know, but I choose. It just happens to be that that's what I do best. In your outline, joy is determined Joy is the determined choice to praise God in all things. What's Deuteronomy say? This commandment that I'm commanding you today isn't too much for you. It's not out of your reach. The word is right here and now, as near as the tongue in your mouth, as near as the heart in your chest. Just do it. <laughs> you guys thought Nike admitted that. <laughs> God's way ahead of Nike. You have to just do it. Walk in joy. At the start of today's message, I said, I think joy is a, we think that joy is a feeling when in reality, joy is something beyond that. We can unpack that now. I want us to look at three practical ways you can walk in joy from the life of the Apostle Paul. If you understand the theological views of joy, you'll understand how joy is something you can possess. Paul had a horrible life. Would anybody want to care to argue that? But he still continued to find joy. Paul writes a book in the Bible called Philippians. It's what we're going to look at the remainder of our few minutes together. He's writing this book in prison, waiting to be killed. And this is what I believe that Paul would want to tell us, to help us to understand that joy is not a feeling, but something beyond that. It's something you possess. How the Apostle Paul found joy. Number one, let's write this down. Choose to look beyond what happened. We look at what happened to us, and, and, and Paul looked beyond the situation. Paul is in prison. Most of us would have been stuck right there. Why am I here? Why am I going through this? But Paul looked at this situation as thanksgiving because he got thrown into prison for serving God. He was honored by that fact. Philippians 1.12 says... Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. How many of you would say that in prison? No, don't even lie to me. You wouldn't. Because the plan of Paul didn't work out. He went to teach and to preach, and while he was in Philippi, he got thrown into prison. But here's what happened. He looked beyond his current situation and said, God, what is the greater plan that you have in place? And while he was in prison, he did a little thing that may have helped you today. It's called writing most of the New Testament. In the middle of prison is a pretty bad day, but he looked beyond that, and he found something beyond that, and he found his joy in what he was doing. The second thing we can learn from Paul is write down number two, choose to find the new opportunities. Paul is in prison writing and waiting to be killed, and he was still looking for opportunities to fulfill his purpose and his existence of why he was in the place where he was at. Philippians 1.13 in your notes. As a result, it has become clear this throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, hmm. most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord. And dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters gave their lives to Jesus. That's what that says. Because he knew his purpose, he didn't let the situation he was in stop him from looking for new opportunities. Find the new opportunity in the situation you are going through. They are there. You just have to look. Number three. How the Apostle Paul found joy. Number three. Focus, choose to focus on what really matters. Philippians 1.15 
says, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one do it of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel, but the other proclaim Christ a faction, not sincerely thinking to raise up affliction for me in my bonds. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and therein I rejoice. Yeah, and will rejoice. He found joy. Joy didn't find him. <laughs> As my grandma would say, it's no big deal. But then she followed that up with the second part of the phrase. This too shall pass. Jesus didn't find joy in the event of the cross. Listen to this. He found joy in the guaranteed outcome of the event. He didn't find joy in the feeling of what the cross brought. Just because he was the son of God did not mean he didn't feel the, the pain. This, this is worth coming for just this next two minutes. It's very different to go through pain with purpose than going through pain without purpose. Let me explain that. Matthew, our five-year-old, how much does he weigh? 50 pounds, give or take. He, his favorite thing to do is whenever I'm not paying attention is to run and jump on top of me. That little 50-pound kid, whenever I'm not expecting it, will take me to the ground, and I'm pretty sure every bone in my back cracked, my neck just kind of turned sideways, and I'm sick for a day and a half. But I can go to the gym and don't make fun of me, and lift 50 pounds, <laughs> maybe. And whenever, I'm, whenever I do it on purpose, it doesn't affect me at all. Whenever you go through something on purpose, the outcome is different. Whenever you go through something unexpectedly, the outcome is Detriment. <laughs> In both situations, Matthew jumping on me, 50 pounds, not sure that he was coming, didn't know. And the same 50 pound weight at the gym, whenever I do know, one I was ready for and one I was not. Pray that you get this. When Jesus hung on the cross, he was not surprised by the suffering. He was not surprised by the shame, the pain, the name calling. He was able to endure the cross for you because he was able to focus on the greater purpose and knowing the assignment in the purpose. You don't know why you're going through the things that you're going through. It is harder to retain the sense of joy when you don't understand the purpose of why you're going through it. But when you understand the theological views of joy, the three things we talked about, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You understand that God has a plan for my life. God will take care of it, and I'm going to choose to find joy. So when Jesus was getting beat on the cross, he could sit there, stand there, whatever, and say, there is joy set before me. Because he understood what he went through was for you. There are things that we go through that we say, God, why do I have to go through this? It's for somebody else. It's because God wants to use you in a way that only he can use you in. But if you don't look at the situation and say, God, I'm going to find joy in this, you will look at it and become the most negative, most boring, most nilly mouth Eeyore person you've ever been around. But whenever I fight through a battle... It just happens to be that that's what Taylor does best. It just happens to be that's what Jennifer does best. Because I choose to walk in joy. 
I'm about to get mad. Okay, I'm going to. You've got to find the best version of yourself in 2023. And that is you have to choose to walk in joy. Life will suck it out of you. But if you don't choose it, you lose it. Thank you for tuning in today. For more content like this, visit our website, www.pathwaychurchok.com to see the variety of ways you can download this content and so much more. It's our pleasure that you would tune in. And we believe that if you take the content you just heard, write down the parts that spoke to you, and work on a plan to apply it, you will not be the same person a year from now. We hope today you can take this content, apply it, share it, let it change you, and you can become all God has called you to become. Thank you again for tuning in. We'll be together again soon. Until then, keep growing.